Here are the top stories for today, the 22nd of June 2022. The health department maintains the country remains at low risk for COVID-19. It, however, reminds the continued need to get the jabs to prevent the infections from spiraling out of control. The Agriculture Department hopes that President-elect Bongbong Marcos taking over its helm will usher in a new era in preventing a looming food crisis. The Metro Manila Development Authority's logs a decrease in vehicles plying EDSA as soaring prices force motorists to hit the brakes on fuel spending. And the lawmaker calls on civil servants to ensure productivity and unhampered service delivery as flexible work arrangements in the public sector take effect amid the new normal. Our top story for today, on the road to sustained recovery from COVID-19, immunocompromised adolescents aged 12 to 17 years old can now receive their COVID-19 booster shots in some hospitals across the country. The Department of Health says immunocompromised minors can now be boosted at least 28 days after their second dose. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, issued the emergency use authorization allowing Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines as booster dose for adolescents on June 15. The Health Technology Assessment Council gave its positive recommendation on June 16. Ayan naman ang ating mga immunocompromised 12 to 17 years old na tumatanggap ng cancer treatment for tumors or cancers of the blood, sumasailalim sa organ transplant, nakatanggap ng stem cell transplant within the last two years, may moderate or severe primary in immunodeficiency, merong advanced or untreated HIV infection, may active treatment with high-dose corticosteroids or other drugs, mga nagdadialysis, those living with autoimmune disease and treatment with specific immunosuppressive medications, at individuals diagnosed with conditions considered to be immunocompromised kagaya ng nakakaranas ng malnutrition, ay maaari na pong tumanggap ng kanilang booster shots matapos at least 28 days ng kanilang second dose of their primary series. The country remains under low-risk classification for COVID-19 despite notable increase in the number of new infections. Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergera said increase in cases is seen in the NCR Plus areas, the rest of Luzon and Visayas. Meanwhile, infections in Mindanao are on a plateau and low case trend despite established small increases in the recent few days. Nationally, nakapagtala tayo ng 3,198 new cases from June 14 to June 20. Bagamat nakakakita na tayo ng notable increase sa bilang ng mga kaso, nanatili pa rin po tayong nasa low-risk case classification dahil nanatili pa rin less than 1 per 100,000 population ang ating average daily attack rate. Verhera also reports that as of June 20, more than 70 million Filipinos or 77.85% of our target have been fully vaccinated. Upang masiguro po ang proteksyon at para sa patuloy na pagtatag ng ating wall of immunity, let's get the job done na sa lalong madaling panahon. The Agriculture Department is confident that the whole-of-government approach under the incoming leadership of President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Agriculture Secretary William Dar said Marcos's decision to temporarily lead the department shows his prioritization of food security in the country. Dar said they are advocating the same political will and that they are rooting for the next leader as someone who is not only strong and diligent, but also decisive to push reforms that will increase production outputs at a lower cost. Meanwhile, Agrarian Reform Secretary Bernie Cruz said their department is already in the process of individualizing the Certificate of Land Ownership Awards, or CLOAS, to serve the farmers better. 
Cruz said President Rodrigo Duterte directed them to split the land holdings as farmers are not prospering in their collective lands, as stipulated in Presidential Decree No. 27 and the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, or CARP. Such laws, he said, are the legacies of the father of President-elect Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and the grandfather of incoming Agrarian Reform Secretary Conrado Estrella III. Cruz also said the government can improve the country's agricultural system through a massive crop production through the Mega Farms Project. The Department of Energy, or DOE, is looking for ways to improve the current fuel subsidy system. The department admits it is a challenge indeed to respond to the rising fuel prices in the world market. Energy Undersecretary Gerardo Erquiza Jr. said they are proposing that mechanisms of Republic Act 8479 or the Oil Deregulation Act be provided with a framework for the government to intervene and address sudden or prolonged oil price hikes, including unbundling the cost of petroleum retail products to determine their real and passed on costs. Erquiza said Secretary Alfonso Cusi earlier lobbied for the unbundling of oil prices for its data gathering and policy making function. Upon the opposition of oil industry players, Erquiza said the circular was subjected to an injunction by the courts despite their argument that the unbundling policy is not violative of the law. Erquiza meanwhile lauded the incoming administration for its plans to tap nuclear power as an alternative energy source and lessen the effects of oil price hikes. Despite the fewer vehicles on the road, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, said there will be no changes in number coding scheme for now. The MMDA said the enforcement of a new scheme is now up to the incoming administration. MMDA Chair Romando Artes said the decrease in the number of vehicles traversing EDSA can be attributed to the increasing prices of fuel products. Sa ngayon po, wala po tayong uh, plano na magpatupad ng expanded number coding scheme dahil nakikita po namin na wala naman pong pangangailangan sa ngayon dahil po patuloy na napapawasan, hindi lang nasasakyan sa ating lansangan at uh, moderate pa lang naman po yung traffic. With a rise in fuel prices, Artes said the Land Transportation Office is pushing for the proper regulation of electric motorized vehicles such as e-bikes and e-scooters. Hindi po iyan regulasyon ng MNDA. Yan po ay issuance ng LTO, yung LTO Regulation 2021-039, kung saan nire-regulate po yung mga iba't-ibang klase ng e-bikes and e-scooters, uh, yung... 12.5 kilometers per hour, pwede lamang po siya sa barangay roads or sa designated bike lanes. Yung pong mga more than 50 kilometers an hour, dapat po uh, meron na silang safety gears na tulad ng helmet na sa pang motor. At kailangan po registrado sa LTO yung uh, e-bikes or e-scooter at may lisensya po yung gumagamit. Yan po yung ilan lamang sa mga regulations na nakalagay po doon sa LTO uh, issuance na 2021-039. Government services must remain unhampered under the flexible working scheme. This is the reminder of Senator Ramon Revilla Jr. to government workers who are now embracing and adapting to the so-called new normal. Revilla said, despite the changes, services to the public should still be effective and swift. The Civil Service Commission approved the flexible work arrangement in the government on June 15. It says the flexible work arrangements are subject to the discretion of the head of agency on the condition that all their stakeholders are assured of continuous delivery of service from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Senator Grace Poe earlier recommends the measure due to the soaring prices of essential goods and lack of public transport. The Department of Energy, or DOE, supported the proposal to conserve oil consumption amid the non-stop fuel price hikes. Still ahead, Malacanang advises the public not to let their guards down following a reported uptick in COVID-19 cases. And five Filipinos were among those killed in a fatal car crash in New Zealand. 
We'll be back after a quick break. Keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. Under dito ang kampo po ng Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary para sa kumpanyang disiplina muna na pinungungunahan ng DILG. Bakit natin kailangan magpabakuna laban sa COVID-19? Dahil mahal mo ang iyong sarili, pamilya at bayan. Ang bakuna ang tiyak na paraan para tuluyang mapigilan ang pagkalat ng virus. May mga patunay na mababa ang prosyento ng pagkalat ng COVID-19 sa mga nabakunahan na. At matapos mabakunahan, malaki na ang tsansa na makabalik ka sa normal mong pamumuhay. Kaya tulad ko magparehistro na at magpabakuna na kontra COVID-19. Muli po, ako si Commander Dito Ocampo, disiplina muna ambassador. Nagpapaalala, huwag matakot magpabakuna dahil bida ang may disiplina. Magparehistro tayo at magpabakuna para sa ligtas na pamilya, ligtas na bayan. Malacanang reminded Filipinos to continue observing minimum health standards after the Department of Health announced that COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila are starting to peak. Outgoing Communications Secretary and Acting Presidential Spokesperson Martin Andanar reminded everyone to wear face masks, practice social distancing, and wash their hands. Andanar acknowledged that it is difficult to avoid crowds nowadays, so people must have to be careful and stay healthy and safe. He allayed fears that the increase in COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila could lead to higher alert level classification or even a lockdown. DOH Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergera said the Philippines recorded a total of 3,051 new COVID-19 cases from June 13 to June 19, which is 82% higher than the cases reported the previous week. Staying with the COVID-19 situation, the country has detected another 32 cases of the Omicron BA.5 subvariant. The number includes 30 fully vaccinated patients, one partially vaccinated patient, while the vaccination status of the other is still being checked. The figure includes 21 cases from Western Visayas, four each from Metro Manila and Calabarzon, and three from Central Luzon. Their travel history and close contacts are now undergoing verification. Five of the cases were asymptomatic, 22 had mild symptoms, while those of the remaining five are being verified. This brings the number of the Omicron BA.5 subvariant cases in the country to 43. Five Filipinos were among the seven people killed in a car crash in New Zealand last weekend. Local media reported that the Filipinos were among the nine victims of the incident where their van collided head-on with a truck along a road in the town of Picton. The Philippine Embassy in New Zealand is now working with local authorities after it received the report on Sunday morning. Ambassador Jesus Domingo has extended condolences to the families of the fatalities from the crash. 
Embassy officials also visited the two Filipino survivors and vowed due assistance to them. A former New People's Army rebel defended the Philippine National Police in its role of probing the connection of communist terrorist groups with communities. Jeffrey K. Eric Celis, Secretary General of Abante Centrong Alianza ng Mga Mamamayan para sa Bayan, slammed party list group Gabriela for accusing government officials and security forces of red tagging. Gabriela Party List Representative Arlene Brosas claimed that the Navota City Police were ordered to do community profiling on Sunday to determine the villages that delivered votes for Makabayan Bloc members during the May 9 polls. Celis accused Brosas of attempting to cover up the recruitment and exploitation activities of CTG fronts. He said there is nothing irregular with the PNP's actions as they must conduct intelligence activities against designated terrorist organizations such as the CPP, NPA, and DF. Meanwhile, the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict vows to continue unmasking front organizations of terrorist groups as part of its mandate to stop insurgency. NTF LCOC spokesperson Lorraine Badoy made the statement after the Alliance of Health Workers sought for the revocation of her physician license, citing her red tagging of health workers as the reason. Badoy said not only is red tagging non-existent, but there is no danger to life, liberty, and security when one is identified as a member of the CPP, NPA, and DF. NTF LCAC acting spokesperson Flosimer Chris Gonzalez also challenged Kabataan Party List Representative elect Raul Manuel to prove whether he supports the fight against insurgency by condemning the atrocities of the CPP, NPA, and DF. Manuel previously said the NTF LCAC is just a waste of people's money and red tagging cases against its officials must be pursued. Government troops in Misamis Oriental are giving credit to civilians for helping them stop or limit the activities of communist terrorist group in their areas. Vince Bautista has the story. During the second quarter of this year, sightings of a communist terrorist group were reported by the civilians on the western side of the province of Misamis Oriental. This was according to the second provincial mobile force company of Upper Libertad, Force Commander Marty Hortiliosa. Maraming nagre-report ng mga civilian dito sa atin at saka sa police station including na sa ating uh, military yung first first mechanized na nakasakop sa area natin kaya na narerespondihan natin kaagad nagagawa naka, tayo ng uh, activities para hindi na sila makapagtanggulo uh, doon sa sa area Despite the sightings, Hortilioza shared that there were no reported incidents of encounters between the armed rebel groups and our uniformed personnel. This event was attributed to the strong participation of civilians, especially those in the hinterlands. Currently, the 2nd PMFC is monitoring the hinterlands, especially those that have the presence of the CTGs. The police group is thankful for the budget that was given to them to conduct the ALCAC activities, especially the Duterte Legacy activity which became a plus factor in minimizing the rebel group in the province aside from the active participation of civilians. Vince Bautista, Philippine Information Agency Region 10, for The Nation. More stories from the newsroom. Farmers in Lambunao, Iloilo are encouraged to barter their products with other goods through the Lambunao Nights 2.0. And peddling for Mother Nature, some 600 bikers in Southern Negros joined the tour of the Fireflies in observance of June as Environment Month. Details ahead, stay with the PNA Newsroom. Follow me, Jonas Po, para sa kampanyang Disiplina Muna na pinangungunahan ng DILG. Bakit ba kailangan magparehistro sa pagpababakuna laban sa COVID-19? 
mahalaga magparehistro dahil ito ang unang step sa pagpapabakuna laban sa COVID-19. May tatlong pamamaraan upang makapagrehistro ang isang Pilipino na nais mabakunahan. Una, ang online registration sa inyong local government unit o LGU. Pangalawa, ang pagpunta sa mga vaccination centers at pagkuha ng registration form. At pakikipag-ugnayan sa mga pinuno ng barangay o sa mga barangay health center. Tandaan, online, sa mga vaccination site o sa mga barangay health centers ang pagpaparehistro sa pagpapabakuna kontra COVID-19. Muli ako po si Paolo Medjones, disiplina muna ambasador na nagpapaalala, huwag matakot magpabakuna. Bida ang may disiplina. Magparehistro at magpabakuna para ligtas ang pamilya, ligtas ang bayan. Disiplinadong Pilipino ay rehistrado para maging bakunado. A more conducive and presentable briefing room welcome reporters covering Malacanang. The Presidential Communications Operations Office or PCOO welcomed reporters and workers to the facility in on Tuesday, which opened after a two-month renovation that started in April. Both the press briefing room and working area located in the new executive building or NEB have been closed since March 2020 to control the spread of the virus during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Palace briefings were regularly held virtually to make announcements and answer questions from the media while the rooms were under renovation. During the opening rites, outgoing PCOO Secretary and Acting Presidential Spokesperson Martin Andanar said reforming the entire bureaucracy of the PCOO and its attached agencies was tough because the government's communication services have not been prioritized for a long time. He acknowledged the Duterte administration for transforming how the media workers accumulate and spread information to the public. Andanar also commended PCO officials and staff members for supporting him throughout his service as the chief of the agency. The town of Lambunao in Iloilo is going vintage in helping local businesses market their products. This is through the Lambunao Nights version 2.0 running from June 29 to July 1st, which will feature barter as one of its events. Arlene Lavilla, the town's economic enterprise and development officer and local economic development investment promotion officer designate, said they will start online and will eventually set up in the plaza to gauge the people's acceptance of the measure. She also encouraged the farmers to consider bartering and exchanging their products with other goods. The event also aims to determine the advantages of online barter compared to doing outright business on site. Lambunao Nights version 2.0 is an offshoot of the previous event last month, focused on assisting farmers and micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs recover from the pandemic's effects. The first event, which was a success, featured food and delicacies, ready-to-wear, pre-loved items and plants. Meanwhile, in Pangasinan, the 100 Islands National Park, or HINP, has recorded nearly 255,000 tourist arrivals or close to pre-pandemic levels from January 1 to June 20 this year. Alamino City Tourism Officer Miguel Sison said the HINP is now averaging from 2,000 to 2,500 daily visitors on weekends and has earned some 21.7 million pesos during this period. Season says the local tourism industry is fully recovering since the province has been placed under Alert Level 1. The province has not imposed an increase in fees amid the rise in petroleum prices. Two cruise ships from Europe have also signified their intent to visit 100 islands in the coming months. The city will also soon accept bookings for famous tourist spots online. 
Further up north, the town of Pagudpud in Ilocos Norte is poised to establish a tourism economic zone in Barangay Caparis Pisan. Re-elected Mayor Rafael Ralph Benemerito II said the establishment of an eco zone will become one of his top priorities under his second term to entice more investors and tourists to the area. The Pagudpud government is banking on its rich natural resources for balanced development. In 2021, the state-run Mariano Marcos State University Special Economic Zone Institute and the Philippine Economic Zone Authority committed to assist Bagudbud to become a tourism economic zone. Initially, various representatives from the LGU provincial government and other agencies convened to talk about eco zone development and identify possible industries that need to be strengthened. In observance of the 30th Provincial Environmental Month this June, about 600 bikers in Southern Negros joined the tour of the Fireflies in Himamailan City on Tuesday to raise environmental conservation awareness. This year's biking event is themed Environmental Conservation for Food Productivity. This is the third consecutive year that Himamailan has hosted the advocacy ride together with the Provincial Environment Management Office. Mayor Raymond Tongson said the riders came not only from the city but also the rest of the 5th district of the province. When Himamailan first hosted the event in 2019, almost 4,000 bikers from all over the Visayas traversed the 78-kilometer route from Bacolo to Himamailan. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The health department maintains the country remains at low risk for COVID-19. It, however, reminds the continued need to get the jabs to prevent the infections from spiraling out of control. The Agriculture Department hopes that President-elect Bongbong Marcos taking over its helm will usher in a new era in preventing a looming food crisis. The Metro Manila Development Authority's logs a decrease in vehicles supplying EDSA as soaring prices force motorists to hit the brakes on fuel spending. And a lawmaker calls on civil servants to ensure productivity and unhampered service delivery as flexible work arrangements in the public sector take effect amid the new normal. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear your face masks and face shields, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on PTV4. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day, everyone.